I'm on the road this week. I mean, well, did one last week and did, and I'm actually having another one this week. So that means that the next one is going to be for a long time coming because, yeah, the next one is going to be a bit of a pain and don't even know whether it's actually worth showing to people. Anyway, last time it was a frame arm, this time round is a BB Legend Zero Gundam. Yes, it's a long time ago, it's released ages already. Yeah, but yeah, I like BB Legend. I like SD Gundam in general because they're simple to build and you can do a lot of interesting little things to them. Yeah. Here is Zero Gundam and this is more specifically is real this is Mario Kenshi Zero Gundam. As in the Demon Dragon Swords uh, Swordsman. Uh, the reason being that this is a lightning dragon sword, but it's called the Thunder Sword um, in English. Uh, if you translate the katakana directly, it's just called a Thunder Sword. But uh, in um, in the Kenji, it's actually uh, the lightning dragon sword version one. There is a version two. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, this is zero uh, version one. Yes, there's a version 1, and there's a version 1 sword. Yes, there's two versions of them. Anyway, he looks nice. He looks pretty, really cute. Um, he is pretty simple, but um, his gimmick is much less to, uh, simpler. It's much more simple than the other one, but um, that's because, uh, well, part swapping. He has two set up. He effectively has um, two helmets and two two chests and effectively three swords. But yeah, the other thing that I really like is the amount of capes he has. He has three piece capes. Uh, most of most of it other time you have two piece cape or, or one piece cape. But this time uh, or some will have three piece but all uh, two of the pieces are exactly the same. This guy has three piece and all three are different. The main piece here, the side piece has actually mounted onto the main piece and this piece is literally on the shoulder only so yeah I really like that uh, let's see mm. oh yeah it's the shoulder uh, mantle is also intended to be removable to increase uh, come on to increase the num amount of articulation you can have on his left arm there you go And he still looks very, very good, even if the cave is a little bit smaller now. Just like all BB Legend, he has a lot of ball joint on his body, and therefore he has reasonably good range everywhere. The big Thunder Sword 1 is also can be mounted onto his back via one of the pegs. There you go. Uh, one of the way weird thing about him is his um, shoulder armor on the right. It's clear, it's clear plastic, and it has this piece that actually on a tight little ball joint here. And the intention is that you mount it in. And oh, might as well show you. And there is a little indent here. And the intention is that that index is going to sit on this little ridge on his chest armor. So that it looks like there's a piece uh, mounted onto his shoulder, uh, link between his shoulder armor and his chest at all time. Yeah, it's alright. It's interesting. Uh, his standard sword, the Falcon Sword, is a one piece. Uh, you have to paint it. In this case, I have painted that a little bit. That's all it is. Uh, the kit comes with stickers, but I only use uh, the eye. That's the only bit of stickers I think I've used at the end. No, I did use one. Uh, there's a white piece of stickers uh, going around his arm, because his arm is actually red. It's a red plastic piece, with a black plastic piece going on top. But uh, the white has to be uh, either paint on or stickers on. 
and the stickers looks reasonable, so I just use it. Sometimes I'm lazy. So uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, him in verse. Let's turn him into version two. So the difference between version one and version two is just the helmet. Oops. There we go. Uh, since we do that, you know what? I gimmick forward facing eye, right facing eye. Since we got a chance, we might as well do it. He just have a really, really light, really, really cool stairs. So I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to get rid of his standard sword because he's going full power now. So his version 1 helmet has a piece of chrome plastic, uh, chrome plated piece. When I was a kid, SD, SD kit, um, there's two things that you always look for on an SD kit. One, chrome, two, clear plastics. This guy has both. In the When I was a kid, that is great. Nowadays, uh, it means that it's hard to paint. Now I'm going to keep this piece in chrome. I think it actually looks reasonably well in this here. Now, the chest piece. We're going to take this piece off. We're going to take the chest off. So the chest is like this. And it's going to change into this. Yes, it looks almost exactly the same. The only difference is that there's two pieces of um, stickers on it now. So they've got a metallic effect on it to match uh, his clear blue plastic part. So chest piece goes on. His that little connector piece between the shoulder is now slightly different. Instead of a feather, it's now have a a piece of uh, holes on it, which I painted in metallic. There you go, and the helmet, which used to be this, turned into this. So his yeah his middle horn now actually split into a series of horns, and there is two pieces of clear blue plastic appear out of it as well, but the chrome disappeared. So it's slightly more ornamented um, sort of helmet. And more importantly now, his Thunder Sword is evolved into version 2. And evolution begin by that. Ding. So that means that he has been uh, swinging his giant sword with the scabbard uh, all this time when he was in version 1. In reality, all he has to do is to pull the sword out. Yeah. So, oh, and interestingly, before he holds his sword like this, this way. But now, you realize that the sharp edge is actually on top, so he has to flip it down this way now. Yes, that's really, really dramatic. That's all it is. And here it is. This is Zero Gundam version 2 with the Thunder Sword 2. Oh, he's staring that way, so I need to stare at it. I have to pose it him this way now. Yes, really, really nice. Again, this one is a very simple gimmick, uh, but the fact that you can actually swap around uh, in between version 1 and version 2 is pretty nice. And just like I said before, um, in SD Gundam, the fact that you have chrome and clear part in the same kit is pretty rare and it's really, really nice. It's some of the things that you look out for when I was a kid. I was, well, when I was looking out for when I was a kid. 
But yeah, if you like this kit, definitely worth picking up. It's cheap at the time and it gives you a lot of different options to choose. It's simple, he hardly have any need for painting. As I mentioned before, um, the only piece on him that I actually generally has to paint or has to use a sticker on are uh, those two uh, metallic blue and that white piece. And that's it. Everything else is almost come pre-colored. Uh, painting that little bit of the holes is easy uh, and it has stickers for it as well. Uh, I painted the sil uh, some silver behind the um, that trans uh, transparent blue. There's no need to do that. It actually looks perfectly fine uh, even without the the silver on the back, but it looks a little bit better, a bit more um, shiny, as you can see, it's a bit more shiny now. But yeah, he's good. Uh, have fun picking up uh, BB Legend, because I have a feeling that the uh, the extended um, SD kit is now slowly killing the SD line. Those things are, are not worth it. Um, compared to the BB Legend, although they're more expensive, they are f so much more fun, so much better. And those e extender, I think, is just going to kill kill um, SD kit from now on. It's, but yeah, by the time that people uh, Bandai realize S, uh, the e extender is not selling well, I think they will literally abandon SD SD Gundam, which is a shame because they are the some of the best thing I had when I was a kid. Yeah, so uh, see you next time on a different video.